Boy, this is going to be a lengthy journal. Well, there are a lot of opinions about AI. Some people claim it's the future and will unlock their creativity. And others think it's a concerning, powerful tool that will be utilized against the well-being of society. And as overarching and broad the technology is, we can honestly talk about this for a million days. But today, let's explore the possible effects, influences, and all-around relationship AI may or may not have with creativity. Okay, so first things first, let's go over with creativity is in general. Creativity is the use of the imagination to create or foster original ideas, uh, especially in the production of an artist's work, you know, or music, writing, and the like. Now, plenty of pro AI people tend to argue that creativity will be strengthened by AI, or now that AI can draw for me, I'm an artist, or AI taught me to believe in my amazing abilities, it saved my mother from a burning bridge, and it sucked my dick. Okay, I may have made that last one up, but people seem pretty confident in its positive influence. So much so that they pretend that there couldn't possibly ever be a potential negative influence or condition that could exist at all. But is that really the case? You see, most people may overlook this due to the craft that is rendering a painting or an image, but creativity in itself is actually a skill. And I believe the skill is mainly overlooked also because it develops simultaneously with your ability to render or to paint or to sculpt or to compose or all of the above, right? The process of creating may take a long time but it provides more opportunities to train this very skill in creativity. And how does it do that, you may ask? Well, with creative problem solving. Now, creative problem solving is pretty self-explanatory. It's problem solving, but creatively, right? Or mainly centering around creative endeavors. But we'll get into this. Now let's start with a basic example, right? So you are drawing still life portraits, or maybe not still life portraits. Would it be still life portraits if it's a people, uh, not just objects? Anyway, you're drawing portraits, portraits of people. What is the creative problem? Well, accurately portraying the facial features. Yes, so it seems pretty straightforward, right? Just draw the features as they look. Well. What are the potential creative solutions in that? Well, you may find, oh, this person's nose is more rounded than the other. We could shape it with multiple circles, or maybe, you know, a basic shape of the values that make up this person's nose is similar to two rhombuses. Or, hey, there tends to be this connective angle between the bridge of the nose and the eyebrows, or even though eyes can be kind of almond shaped, if I make it more circular, it look more it looks more cute, docile, adorable. Or, you know, maybe this last one, if the lower lid is more straight and the upper lid is more rounded, the character tends to look more Asian because it's a more oriental feature. All of these things are kind of things that were a result of not only study, but creative problem solving. Because they're not exactly direct one-to-one -one as to how people actually look they're more so simplifications our brain essentially says this looks right and it connects the dots even though it might not be 100 percent cold objective logical and accurate but we still sort of make the conclusion right okay but what's wrong with making that faster okay so see that's the thing it's not necessarily even making it faster. It's kind of bypassing it entirely. Even if it were simply making the process faster, it would still lower the amount of creative problem solving being done throughout the process, which not only lowers the understanding of the subject matter, 
but growth of creative problem solving in general. No matter how advanced the tech gets, problem solving will probably always remain some sort of a pivotal and vital skill to nourish. Uh, by not doing so, you'll always be left vulnerable to those who do. I mean, problem solving of every kind, especially the creative kind, is used in all types of fields and studies and probably sits at the forefront of human ingenuity, if we're being honest. Okay, but what if the tech can literally do the thinking for me? Why should I even think then? Well, I mean, congratulations. If that's the case, you're just a bot. But how about, how about we highlight this whole situation with a more practical example? Does owning a smartphone give you an edge over anyone around you? Uh, no, because everyone has a smartphone. Nobody needs to go to you to use their smartphone. Um, when everyone has access to the life-changing technology, the only real distinguishing skills are the skills that are associated with you that transcend the technology, not the technology itself. See, I believe creative solving is one of them. I mean, think of the crazy bastard who decided, hey, we're just gonna put like gliding platforms underneath our skyscrapers in Japan to accommodate for earthquakes so they don't fall over. I mean, that's not necessarily the first solution that comes to anybody's mind. I think you have to reach a bit for that. And digging into the abstract interpretations of what is possible, what is not, what is real, what is isn't, uh, is kind of hand in hand with creating art of any kind. It's, it's all shockingly experimental. Okay, okay. Well, why are you even bringing it up? It'll be fine, won't it? Well, see, that's the thing. The reality of the situation is that entirely depends on you. See, prior to AI, there was really no way of depicting well-rendered imagery without a fundamental understanding of, eh, I, well, the arts. But not just the arts, but also the science that makes up the world around us and how it relates to the filter that is art. See, it was kind of a requirement in order to succeed at creating any sort of representational imagery. And in that process, you will have to learn the creative solutions of your art forefathers or art daddies before you. This improves your creative problem solving skills as well. However, because this happens so subtly, it's often that people don't realize that this is a skill that's been developed until well after they spent years learning to create any sort of art whatsoever. Isn't creative stuff just for fun though? Why does this matter when math exists for problem solving? Well, to be fair, I could make an entire whole other video on the importance of creative endeavors for the health and well-being of humans, uh, especially as self-aware creatures. But the thing is, traditional problem solving on an academic level is fairly formulaic and not super creative. I mean, it can be, but it's often not taught or explored in such a way for majority of people who deal with math throughout grade school and maybe to the bare minimum extent that they can in college. And well, you start getting into the wonky donkeys of math when you maybe major in math and you start exploring the elements of being a mathematician and all of that. And that also could use an entirely different video. But it has to be when dealing with the arts. It has to be creative. The problem solving doesn't have an option but to be creative because you're dealing with a completely abstract subjective space and how to express that. So we could like explore the many successes unrelated to art that are a result of creative solutions, many of these falling into, well, business and business practices, uh, engineering, science, etc., etc. But the point is, if one of, or maybe even all of, the avenues to build this skill is being bypassed, 
then it starts to become necessary to incorporate intentional practices to foster it. Or it dies, because that's how your body functions. You don't use it, you lose it. Much like how modern technology and food added so many physical conveniences and readily available nutrients to human beings, uh, humans now require a regulation of their diet and an exercise routine, or else they're more than likely going to be overweight and unhealthy. And you know, I guess you don't have to, but yeah, you'll probably feel a lot worse as a result. In short, this is an easily overlooked skill that's probably more important to foster than most realize. And the technology honestly incentivizes you not to, because I do think based on how AI is being developed, it wants to automate and do as many things for people as possible. And well, frankly, it's just, it's kind of like, yeah, I don't want to do anything. So do everything for me. It does incentivize laziness to some extent. All right, now let's talk about creativity and profession. <laughs> Now, there are bound to be several effects on professional creative careers, and to be fair, most of them will probably not be discussed, you know, in the realm of how AI is going to affect them, let's say, kindly affect them, i.e. possibly remove them. But for now, I will continue to focus on creativity as a practice and a skill, and we'll continue the discussion there, but in a professional spectrum. So, to best illustrate AI's effect on the professional spectrum, I will use an analogy and how that relates to the whole situation. So, let's say you have a video game, right? And uh, this video game is an RPG with a, a level cap of, I don't know, let's, uh, let's pick a random number, like uh, 60? 60. Um, so now in this game, you have two groups of people. The first group are those who just level 1 to 60, normally. Just, just play through the game, proceeding exactly how the game was designed, and as a result, they spend a sufficient amount of time getting familiar with how the game functions, with the various mechanics in the game, uh, the best way to navigate it, and all the ins and outs of how the game works, like the vibe, the motions, the physics, all of that, right? Now you also have group two, who just purchased a pass to get all the way to 60 without spending a single minute of game time, right? None of the same experiences or anything. Now, if you've ever played a game with this feature, you probably know how it ends for group two. They are completely and utterly incapable of navigating the game at all, despite being maximum level. They are completely incompetent, and they can't really do much of anything, let alone even remotely keeping up with the standards set by group one. So AI creates a similar phenomenon in, well, any field in which it kind of just does things right with a skill, but let's focus on the skill of creative problem solving. It's unlikely anyone without actual experience having to utilize creative problem solving skills and just through creating art, developing creative projects of all capacities and whatsoever, it's, it's unlikely that they'll be able to fully utilize this shortcut of AI, right? In this regard, they probably won't really be qualified to just do as much of what the, the results might allow them to believe. And that's namely because your mind hasn't really trained, grown, or developed to even navigate that space, to know what is even supposed to be happening. And, you know, it's a little more concerning with AI because it's not just really like getting a level boost it's kind of just simply auto playing and is it auto playing correctly or incorrectly hey you don't particularly know anyway the point is there is likely not going to be a situation where neglecting any sort of skill to be earned will somehow benefit you in a professional spectrum if you're bypassing the work 
you probably are incapable of doing the work. There's no sort of shortcut or hire you can do to qualify you for the work. They'll probably see it. And this is tragic because in my own experience, I do feel like if I had a potential out, I probably would have taken it, right? I'm not certain I would have jumped down deeply into the art journey as much as I have. And to be fair, it completely and utterly changed how I viewed everything. The neurons it creates deliberately just changes how you approach every single situation. And I don't know if I'd, I, I, I don't have confidence in the fact that I would be able to approach any of my situations in the same capacity had I not learned these things. And I feel like it also follows the trail of procedural generation, right? Because procedural generation is another very automated thing that happens in, well, I guess in game development mainly, right? And it can be good. It has been done very well on occasion, but it's been done poorly as well for like the same reasons. It incentivizes laziness. And the most painful of the situations are the ones where the laziness was just completely and utterly indulged, wasn't it? Uh, and, and you can see that whenever a game is just obviously procedurally generated and all of the content is just completely boring and copy paste. And it actually, they tried to procedurally generate it so much that it ended up not really making any sort of content at all until they have to maybe go back and just handcraft the content in the first place. But then eh, they should have just done that from the beginning, right? Right? That's not really procedurally generating, is it? So, yeah. Okay. So we're going to... I'm going to speed run this because it's not really worth a lot of time. And I think it's sort of a meme statement in the first place. So anyway, we're going to go through it. One, billions are invested into it. So obviously it's real skill. And two, you probably only said it because you're insecure. How people view your job, which you probably complained about doing four days out of the week anyway. And you'd rather be a crap in a bucket because it makes you feel justified about your decisions, about your life, and your career. Uh, which probably weren't that bad anyway, but hey, you know, everybody was kind of misled about careers, the workforce, and how everything kind of works in the adult world. And, you know, what do you also think machine learning is being developed for? It's physical labor. But back to the point of creative problem solving. I'm probably going to say that a lot in this video. Oh my god. I stress that people should probably actively cultivate this skill because it's one that can be very easily neglected as technology does more for us. Well, if technology can do it, why worry about it? I think basing a foundational reliance on tech which you have no control of or say in the amount you can access it is, like I said before, probably too vulnerable for your well-being or anything about your future. And another reason is to prevent brain atrophy because I don't know if you knew this, but all types of problem solving benefits the brain and makes it healthier, more liable to do things. You know, much like how when physical labor decreased and people stopped working in farms or like in coal mines and stuff, well, I mean, there's still people in coal mines, but not nearly the same amount. Weight gain and heart problems suddenly started to increase. So the idea is essentially to exercise your brain because your natural incentive to keep it sharp is actually kind of in jeopardy. So does this mean you can't be creative with AI? Um, well, you certainly can be creative with AI, right? I think a good example would be Corridor Crew. Okay, I know, I know, I know, hear me out for just a second. As much criticism there is about their method and their stance on using AI and the way they chose to go about it and all these other factors, I asked myself a question. Is there anything that I like about anime rock, paper, scissors? 
And you know, I realized, yeah, there actually was something I liked about it. And what was it? Well, it was the writing. I liked the writing. Which happened to be the one handcrafted thing out of the entire production. And you know, everything else as an honest product left something to be desired. I mean, look at this piano playing. The keys don't even respond to his fingers. But that was interesting because the writing honestly felt like that's where all the creativity was anyway. It was just an interesting concept. And I feel like if they didn't use any of the AI assets at all, none of the backgrounds, none of the diffused frames, none of that, I still would have enjoyed it potentially more depending on how well they did. And you know, they probably ended up with a, I guess, pretty good product because, well, they do have prior experience with creative problem solving with all the films that they created, all the visual effects that they do. They've been running the channel for like years and made multiple short films. So I, I think they are versed in the <laughs> skill of creative problem solving. I don't think they could have utilized the technology in its rudimentary state to the level that they did without some creative problem solving. And then there's like the other elements where people actually solve the problem for them and they just borrow the creative problem solving from them. But <laughs> the thing is this video isn't about what you can do. Like I said earlier, it's more so about what you're incentivized to do. And people fall into what they're incentivized to do a lot more than what they should do. So with that in mind, um, yeah, those are my thoughts and concerns to be completely frank about AI and creativity and how it could potentially affect it in the future and people's willingness to actually foster it. Yeah. Could I just be getting worried about nothing? I, I mean, potentially, yeah, but I don't know. I don't think it's entirely about nothing. I think it's something that will probably have uh, a sort of rebellion to it, right? An overlooked rebellion or a silent rebellion, maybe, whatever. But I do think there will be people who just kind of reject it and choose to kind of dig into the creativity on their own and completely just forego everything automated to just dig into it. And that'll be the thing that kind of keeps creativity alive, but not at all the people who just want to skip the process in general, right? Want to embrace things just happening without any work. Of course not. And I think that that happens more often in history. For everything that turned out fine, there were actually people pushing to make sure it did, rather than just doing nothing. Anyway, those are the thoughts. Thank you for watching the video. This is slightly different content, but um, yeah, I'll get back to the fun shit later. Those videos just take a little bit longer to make, so I just wanted to like uh, pump out a little thought piece, a little think piece or whatever. Anyway, thank you again for watching. Please feel free to like, subscribe, or don't. Either way, if you're enjoying your day, it's cool. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Deuces.